Hi guys. Since we're going into the new year, I thought I would do a retrospective video on my 2021 and how I basically changed my outlook on life and my sort of advice that I would give my past self. So basically this is just a little, my story, my year of reflection, a retrospective of 2021. So I went into 2021 honestly in such a bad headspace i was so sad i was really deep in an eating disorder i was basically spending every single day of my life like not doing anything not really wanting to do anything i'm not gonna lie i think the only thing i did in january 2021 was sit in a dark room and you can really see that from my memories of my snapchat where i think i have like one picture i just sat in a dark room all day and i think i would like binge watch 10,000 calorie challenges like genuinely that was all i did for a whole month and then february honestly took a turn for the worst february hit and i was just i honestly don't remember much of February. This is the thing about, I think people don't realise about eating disorders is that you don't remember stuff. If you're so malnourished and so like obsessed with food, you won't remember. And then March came along and I decided enough was enough. I got told I was going into an inpatient unit and honestly when i first got told that i was like i'm not going in yeah and i went in for me it was needed but inpatient units i tried to recover by myself and it just wasn't working i just i couldn't do it i had faked my way into thinking I was in recovery but realistically I know exactly what I was doing and I wasn't getting any better outside of an inpatient unit however I think that like, adults inpatient units are a little bit different and you're surrounded by people that some people that have had eating disorders for genuinely years like 30 year olds 40 year olds and it can be quite heartbreaking at times as well it can be triggering it can be like an environment where you pick up habits as well and i definitely did pick up habits when i was there but in the grand scheme of things going in for me was beneficial initially it was supposed to be a six to eight week admission but it ended up being four months in the next like a few minutes of the video i'm just going to be talking about um, hospital admission so if that can be triggering for any of you um, please skip ahead. I ended up getting refeeding syndrome and I don't know if anyone will know what refeeding syndrome is um, it's not com it's not a commonly known thing but it's basically when your body is really malnourished and you start eating again your salts and your body just goes into base like a shock almost it can mess up your salt levels which can then lead to like heart attacks and all your organs basically shutting down i ended up spending around two weeks in a general hospital and it was quite scary as well because it's a very dangerous thing to get because it affects your heart predominantly um if it's not treated and it's not treated quickly it can be quite like fatal quite quickly so that was i think the pivotal moment for me which was you need to recover you need to switch your mindset into a positive and 
basically what are you doing with your life why are you to what end is the scene sort of So I really had to do some self-reflection. So after that sort of like very traumatic experience, I decided, you know what? There's no point. My eating disorder isn't actually serving me any, pr um, isn't serving me anything. And if I put my mindset to recovery, I can become what I've always wanted to become. Now I'm gonna be talking about basically my tips to self-reflect and my tips to improve yourself to a point where you actually like the person you're becoming. The first thing that I did was waking up early. So I used to be someone that went to bed at like 4 or 5 a.m. and then would wake up like midday and it was such a bad habit and I never had any of my mornings. My day would start at like 1 p.m. and then it would end at like 4 a.m. and it was just an, a cycle. I never saw a morning. So I started waking up a lot earlier and getting into a routine. Um, I wake up at 7.30 now and I go to bed at like 10.30, 10, 10.30. 10 um, Getting into a routine where you can see the mornings and have time when the world's not so hectic and have time to yourself is honestly one of the most beneficial things that I did to change. I personally think that mornings are my favourite time of the day now, like when I wake up, especially in the summer when the sun like is coming through the windows and you're just kind of thriving and that like morning that initial morning coffee fix your sleep routine step number two to becoming the better person is podcasts i literally owe my left kidney fun fact my left kidney doesn't work so much to emma chamberlain's um anything goes podcast and I would recommend it to basically anyone, but I would particularly recommend it if you're like in your 20s, but also if you're slightly younger, because to be honest, she gives some really good advice. Listening to her podcasts and just how she viewed the world and how she's sort of adapted herself to view the world really helped me gain sort of like a perspective of if you're not living your life for yourself what are you doing quite frankly everyone is involved in their own life anyway so why would you not live for yourself there's no point living for someone else there's no point living so you can get some validation from anyone else because at the end of the day that will never lead to you being happy the only way you can lead to you being happy is for you to truly like the person you're becoming because otherwise you're just gonna pick out flaws where there aren't any flaws. Step three to self-improvement, getting outside every single day, whether that is a five minute walk. I live for my fresh air and getting actual light. I think it's really underrated and I think some people are like, no, I just want a day where I'm inside and that is completely fine. And that is sometimes needed, just what the doctor ordered. But I still think you should get outside for at least five minutes. It's just the vitamin D. It's usually when I listen to my podcasts as well. So kind of two in one. Okay, step four would be how I look at the world. So I think I used to seek validation from two places actually. I used to seek validation from academic success and also other people, just general other people thinking that I was successful. Quite frankly all that did was make me make decisions that I thought people would think were successful. I 
would make decisions where I could almost flex the fact that I had achieved something without actually thinking about whether I would enjoy it. So something like going to university and not taking a gap year initially, I kind of wanted to take a gap year, but I thought people would look at me badly if I did and would think that I was doing nothing with my life. So I didn't. And then I got really ill and it did not benefit me in any way. And I think I always did look for academic success. I would almost work really hard so that I could flex a grade. I really admire people that put in a lot of work to their academia and I always actually really liked school but I think there are different routes you can take and I think if something is overwhelming you taking a year out is completely fine and this is where I changed sort of my outlook on life and I decided to live for myself and if someone was judging me for making a decision or make, going down a path that they might not think is stable enough, it's not their life. And the only kind of goal that I have in life is to enjoy it. We're on a floating rock. Like, gen like really think about this. We are on a rock. And what is the point of working your whole entire life down to a T to impress everyone else? if you're not enjoying it, like, at the end of the day, what was the point in that? No point. Last step, step number five. We'll call this five steps to self-improvement. Nourishing your body. This is in multiple ways. Nourishing your body with all the vitamins that you need, doing skincare, going, having a shower. I remember when I was sitting in darkness every day, taking a shower was genuinely like a chore. To get myself to get up and go into a shower was something that took so much effort. I could barely even get up to go to the shower and I think a lot of people relate to that. Taking care of just general hygiene makes you be able to thrive, be able to live, be able to be a happy healthy person to be around and if i don't need to say it nourishing yourself with food actually having enough food so that you can live your life to the fullest and that you can actually give your that you can actually partake in things and you don't just spend the whole day thinking about food and not actually being able to do anything with any of your friends or any of your family because you don't have the energy the number one priority and i think if you need to have a break from academia or if you need to have a break from your everyday life for a while and work on yourself and nourishing yourself that is okay and you need to self you need to do accept that that is okay and that sometimes that will be the most successful thing that you can do thank you guys for listening to me run my five steps to self-improvement and things that i incorporated in my life that sort of definitely helped um one thing i really do want to get into actually is journaling and reading so they're two of my goals for 2022 to make it even better but i hope you enjoyed my story and you took something from this and if you're going to 2022 with a similar mindset of I I want to work on myself they were my five steps I feel like 2022 is a time where we just we all kind of need to thrive we've had some rubbish years and I think a lot of people have suffered mentally because of the pandemic and I think we deserve some happiness love you lots um have a beautiful day have a beautiful week have a beautiful 2022 i shall see you soon bye